We spoke about wanting to increase the positive energy in the P in the material. So resonance. We want to increase the stored energy. Which means the strain or the displacement is going to be higher. The velocity at this point is going to be higher uh, than the other points. It's going to be amplified. So we mentioned the other the other time where the electric field, I guess you can call it a vector, has to be in line with the velocity vector, and this is called resonance. And the velocity vector is all, the the electric field vector through this E, you know, it causes a force. So there's actually a stress, um, which is, you know, directly related to a force with regards to the uh, area, using the area. So force, you can just write area, which has no vector, it's a scalar. So thus we get this resonance uh, effect. And if you want to a little bit understand uh, why we get an, you know, an increase in stored energy, it's because of the following equation. Force times the distance, delta D, equals energy. And we want to input energy, not take it out. If we are moving the force applied, you know, it's, it's, it's the F of T function. You know, it's the electric field or f of t, that's the force applied. If we have this delta d, uh, this delta d is also time dependent. So, the case where f times uh, delta d, It's going to be minus some phase, right? It's going to be there's going to be a phase lag uh, between these two uh, points. Minus some phase lag, and thus we have a change in the input. I'll say input energy over time. Okay, and this is for a mass spring system without without a damper. So sometimes we typically draw a damper and I'll show what the effect of the damper is soon but we're just trying to understand this mass spring system before we add a little more complication to it. So we, we know that whenever we uh, need to find the maximum point, one for with regards to phase, so we want to find E max or rather E With regards to the phase, so which phase will yield, yield the largest uh, d? Well, well, we won't worry about d right now. We're just gonna we're just gonna look at these two numbers here. We have the sine term, and we have this um, this other term here. So if we actually end up multiplying these together uh, and taking the derivative, which is normally what you do, you know, to find the largest frequency. Or the largest phase, the phase which would be, uh, which would yield the most and the best result, uh, we would say we had f sine theta t, which is because the phase doesn't depend on the uh, time. Times uh, we have to take the derivative of the inside, which is just going to be a negative one. This is going to be zero negative, this is going to be zero derivative. So we take the derivative of the inside, then we take the derivative of the outside. Cosine omega t. So what we actually end up with is f delta d, which we don't really care about. We, we care about this part. This is negative sine theta times cosine theta. Oh yeah, and sorry, this is not cosine theta t. This is cosine theta uh, t minus theta here. 
So this is the term or what we come up with to make the highest to make the highest value. We know that this number here is going to be maximized when we have a condition uh, such as sine times sine. So if there's two sinusoidal functions together, they better be the same thing. That's how we're going to get the highest highest number. Sine times sine equals like this. And then cosine times cosine, it's going to be like, and the regular sine is just a it goes it goes up and down basically so you don't get any a lot you don't get a larger number but your number always stays positive so what do, what do I mean by that by looking at it from like a kind of like a power perspective uh, if you know what I mean if we have two sine functions and this can be converted into a cosine so you can just take this instead of sine, calling this cosine you can call we can call this also now sine omega t minus phi and we know that cosine is 90 degrees lagging behind sine so we have to add 90 to cosine to sine to bring it back 90 so this is the, basically the case and this function right here is maximized it's, it's average value. It's average value is maximized because we care about the average energy input uh, is maximized. So if we have a, uh, if the phase is, if the phase is equal to 90, this negative phase, this phase lag, I, I already had this negative in here, but it could be, it could have been positive theoretically, but uh, so I guess it would be plus, and then the plus would be 90. It would be negative 90 phase for a negative 90 phase between voltage. electric field and current we would have the um, we, we would have this is the case so we have the uh, we have this this is negative 90 and then we'd have the vol the velocity in line so due to the fact that the velocity if, if this is 90 degrees if this phase is negative 90 between uh, st stress or sorry strain in electric field or forcing uh, then we have actually the condition where this force can do the maximum amount of work because sometimes if the phase is not completely in line so let's just take the a random case let's call this uh, strain let's call this electric field sometimes the uh, if the velocity is is in line uh, with the electric field, then we're actually doing work. And if the velocity is not in line with the electric field, then we're taking energy out of the system. Because if this, if we're applying a force, but this d is going opposite, I'm just giving an example, we're not, we're not, we're losing energy. Meaning we're doing work on the outside material. We're, we're doing work on the, we're doing work on the power supply, which is kind of not really useful for 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 us so basically we want the most work in and the way we get the optimum condition is by this negative 90 which actually refers to the uh, zero phase with regards to the velocity so this uh, lesson we kind of just went over um, that the maximum stored energy increases and the reason it increases is because uh, we are actually the we're most effectively doing work when the phase between uh, velocity and the forcing is zero degrees, or the phase between the displacement or the strain is negative ninety. Because we're actually moving in the direction which we're pushing, and if we're moving in the direction which we're pushing, so when the f is negative number, and d and then this uh, and this value, also here. Uh, is also moving in the same direction this displacement will become positive most for the most part so this is why we kind of we have this positive number uh, we have the zero velocity uh, describing the uh, zero phase velocity describing the resonance condition and now we'll go over the the reason why at resonance uh, you know we mentioned that we have this phase plot 
where we go from 0 and we go all the way to minus 180. But why at this point? Is there a resonance? Because the zero velocity allows for the most stored energy, the zero phase. And this, this uh, specific pattern, depending on the resonance frequency, you know, the phase depending on the frequency, this is a function of also the material properties, namely the compliance, the geometry, as we saw earlier, and the density. So we will investigate this, the mathematical calculation. Where does it come from uh, in, the next, uh, le in the next lesson? Thanks for watching.